Did you enjoy our last video on female death row inmates and their last meals? Well, if you did, you're in for a treat. In today's video, we'll be doing a part two with more last meal requests. Hope you have a snack with you because it's time to dig in. First up is Kelly Gissendanner. Kelly was born in Lawrenceville, Georgia to a poor cotton farming family. According to sworn affidavits by friends and family, she was molested by her stepfather and various other men throughout her childhood and teen years. In her senior year of high school, she claimed to have been assaulted and had a son as a result. At 19, Kelly married her first husband, Jeff Banks. The two were together for six months. In September of 1989, Kelly married Douglas Gissendanner for the first time. They had a baby girl together, lost their jobs, and eventually moved in with Kelly's mother. Douglas joined the military, after which he and his family were sent to Germany. Kelly reportedly had an affair and became pregnant by a man who later died of cancer. She and Douglas divorced over the matter in 1993. Two years later, in 1995, she and Douglas remarried and bought a house together the following year. On February 7, 1997, Kelly's suspected lover Gregory Owen ambushed Douglas outside his home and forced him into a car at knife point. He then drove Douglas to a secluded area where he beat him with a nightstick and stabbed him. Kelly, who arrived moments after the murder, then set fire to the vehicle in an attempt to destroy any evidence. During her trial, it was revealed that Kelly had begun her plot to get rid of her husband at least three months prior to the murder. Her motive was an insurance payout and her guarantee of keeping their house. Owen took a plea deal, but Kelly was sentenced to death by lethal injection. Her final meal request was for cheese dip with chips, Texas fajita nachos, and a diet frosted lemonade. She was the first woman executed in Georgia since 1945, as well as the only woman executed in the United States in 2015. Next up on our list is Rhonda Bell Martin. Born in 1907, Rhonda was a waitress in Montgomery, Alabama. In March of 1956, she confessed to having murdered her mother, two husbands, and three of her children. She denied responsibility for the deaths of two other children. In an article published regarding her case, Rhonda supposedly loved the attention that came with the deaths of her loved ones. This included receiving sympathy cards and hosting funerals in which she took great care to have them buried side by side in private plots. Her fifth husband, who was formerly her stepson, was poisoned just like the others, but he survived and was left a paraplegic instead. It was this tragic occurrence that led investigators to dig deeper into all the death surrounding Rhonda. Prosecutors claimed insurance payouts as the motive behind Rhonda's killing spree. But many believe this to be false, considering she only ever took out enough money to cover burial costs. Rhonda herself never gave any motive for her crimes. Although she was only ever convicted of one murder, she admitted to every single one she was suspected of. Rhonda Martin was sentenced to death and executed by electric chair in 1957. Her last meal consisted of a hamburger, mashed potatoes, cinnamon rolls, and coffee. She was the last woman executed in Alabama until 2002. Following Rhonda Martin, we have Betty Butler, nicknamed the Sphinx. Her crime characteristics were described as full of rage and motivated by jealousy. Betty Butler was convicted for the murder of her presumed lover, Evelyn Clark. It was reported that Betty used a handkerchief to strangle Evelyn and proceeded to drag her out to the lake and drown her in front of a group of fishermen. Betty admitted to the murder but claimed it was justified because Miss Clark made unwanted advances toward her. However, others believe it was truly due to Miss Clark giving attention to another woman. 
Fellow inmates described Betty as polite, but never friendly, and said she rarely interacted with anyone. For her final meal, Betty Butler requested scrambled eggs with cheese, a piece of toast, two glasses of milk, and a dish of apricots. Betty Butler was the first black woman to receive the death penalty in Ohio. Moving on to our next killer woman, we have Lois Nadine. Lois was convicted for murdering her son's ex-girlfriend because she believed young Cindy Bailey had been plotting to murder her son. Talk about motherly love. Lois, along with her son and another woman, picked Cindy up at a motel so Lois could confront the woman about the rumors. When Cindy denied the allegations, Lois reportedly choked the woman and stabbed her. They then drove Cindy to Lois's ex-husband's home. Once inside the house, the three forced the young girl to sit in a recliner chair while Lois taunted her with a handgun, telling her she was going to die. Lois allegedly shot Cindy four times. An autopsy revealed nine bullet wounds to the body. It is also said that Lois's son reloaded the gun for her. Lois's son received a life sentence, while his mother got handed the death penalty. Although she tried to appeal the sentence multiple times, the Supreme Court blocked her from doing so after too many failed attempts. Lois's last meal was barbecue ribs, onion rings, strawberry banana cake, and a cherry limeade. The final lady on our list for today is Judy Bueno Año. Judy was born and raised in Texas. After losing her mother at the age of four, Judy reportedly suffered physical and psychological abuse at the hands of her father and stepmother. When she was 14, she spent two months in prison for attacking her father, stepmother, and two stepbrothers. Upon being released, she chose to attend reform school where she graduated in 1960. She gave birth to Michael, an illegitimate son, the following year. Judy married a U.S. Air Force sergeant named James Goodyear. When he died on September 16, 1971, it was believed to be due to natural causes. In 1973, she moved in with boyfriend Bobby Morris. In January of 1978, he died as well. In 1979, Judy's son, Michael, became severely ill with symptoms, including paraplegia. On May 13, 1980, Bueno Año took Michael out in a canoe. The canoe rolled, and Michael, weighed down by his arm and leg braces, drowned. Following Michael's death, Bueno Año opened a beauty salon. In 1983, Judy began a relationship with a man named John Gentry. Gentry was severely injured when his car exploded. While in recovery, police were in the process of investigating the incident and found several inconsistencies in Judy's background. Upon further investigation, investigators found that Judy had been telling her friends that Gentry was suffering from a terminal illness. Vitamin pills, which Judy had been giving Gentry, contained arsenic and paraformaldehyde. Exhumations of Michael Goodyear, James Goodyear, and Bobby Joe Morris showed that all had died of arsenic poisoning. Judy received substantial life insurance payouts after each death. In 1984, Judy was convicted for the murder of Michael and the attempted murder of Gentry. In 1985, she was convicted of the murder of James Goodyear. She received a 12-year sentence for the Gentry case, a life sentence for the Michael Bueno Año case, and a death sentence for the James Goodyear case. Her last meal consisted of broccoli, asparagus, strawberries, and hot tea. Judy Bueno Año was the first woman to be executed in Florida since 1848, or electrocuted in the U.S. since 1976. Her body was cremated after her execution. So, did any of these killer women have any of your favorite foods for their last meal? Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.